Okay, guys, let's talk classes. Um, someone put in the comments that they needed to understand this a little more. So we're talking classes for landlords. If you go up here and click this um, gear icon, you go over to your all lists. Here's your classes. Okay. Now, I have this set up already. I have a building one, that's my parent class, right? And then within it, I have all of the subunits. So I made five units and then I have one for general. So if you had an apartment building or a duplex or something like that, fourplex, and then there were certain things that are shared, right? Among like for the whole property that you couldn't allocate to one specific unit, you're gonna put it to general. Now, I already have this one set up, but I'll show you how you would make another one. So you just click new. We're going to say subclass building one. And then I'll do, I always write it out again anyway, though. Building one unit six. And I, no, I did that right. Okay. So in here, I have another one called GNA. That's just like general and administrative. So let's say that literally has nothing to do with the property. It's completely overhead. And this unit H, that was probably from another video I made. Okay. So the main thing, I hate this. They keep changing the way everything is done in these things. I'm going to show you something. If you go up here and you switch to account and view, and you can, this is a regular subscription. This is not one. People used to always say, Lori, your videos, it doesn't look like mine. Um, so I went and paid $85 for this each month or something like that. But if you go to account and view, it's so much easier. So look right here, it says I'm in, in account and view. So again, I click the gear, you can switch back to business view. This is the idiot version. I don't mean that meanly, meanly. Um, this is where they keep dumbing QuickBooks down. So if you're in this, look how much easier it is. Now I don't have to go try and find it in bookkeeping. I can just go simply to reports. Okay. And I made this one of my favorites, profit and loss by class. Now, right now it's got, I had posted all kinds of different things like deposits, expenses, just different things to show um, how you would track something by its class. Let's go into one and look at it more. Okay, so it's building one unit three, that's linked to the unit three building one income code. And then over here on the class, I'm putting that as well. Okay, so then what we could do, why, why does this matter? It matters because if you have multiple units or you have maybe two buildings or God forbid, two properties inside one LLC, you're really, you know, there could be a reason you need to show your books on one of your properties. You don't want them to see the others. Okay. So let me just show how you would kind of bring this down into one building. We're going to go to customize. We're going to do classes. Now we've got to go to filter class. And now we're going to pick building one. I think if I pick building one, it's going to do everything that is there. So let's see. Yeah. So then it did the units as well. Okay. So total building. And since I made all of these, I don't think I can actually collapse it anymore. You're still going to see it like that. Well, wait, total only, there we go. Still the same amount. Okay, I had, I love to run a P&L and I put it by month. But if we're just looking at one building here, this is a lot easier. Okay, so then we see we have, this is another thing I'm just gonna jump into for a second. Um, I like all your units to be subcodes. Do not make it all rental income, you're gonna, you can't have a rent roll then. So make sure you do that, okay? So now we can see 
this one for building one, the rent rental income is 49,043. So we can go up here again, we could change it and not do building one and we could do building two. Click run. Then you could always click. So here's your units so you can see the difference. Now, if we went back up here to display, we changed it by classes. We went over here to customize. We don't filter. Let's see what it does. Eh. I wish you could collapse them, but I don't think you can. That's that's where it, like it's a little annoying. You might want to export it to Excel. So we have this, so total building one is really right here, right? And here's your total building two. So this net income of one is 46,000, net income of building two, 30,000. And I have some other things in here. So that's the only thing though, because you have all the subcodes and then when you're comparing, I guess we can't do any, eh, I'd still rather have it that way. So the main thing, why do we use classes? Again, it's to track individual locations or units, um, a project. Even if you're doing something like a renovation and it's gonna go on your balance sheet, right? Um, you're gonna spend $50,000 on a renovation. You could still class all of that to the renovation. It's gonna run, you could run it by the balance sheet. But I would also say, you should still put that on the unit and, the, and or building. And then the next thing I would say though, is on a renovation, anytime you're doing that, make sure you make a new asset code for that year and that renovation. But that's like a whole different thing. We're just talking classes. Okay, so the main thing, the landlords who need classes are ones that have more than one physical property inside of one LLC. That happens with 1031 exchanges all the time. I have one client that ended up getting three different properties inside one LLC. We don't really like that though, right? We would, you really need to try and keep those all segregated. Okay. Um, the main thing is that you're able to compare the income, your revenue and your expenses on a property and you're able to segregate it. So if there was one thing, like we only wanted to run things on unit one, building one, we would go up here to customize, go to filter, go down to class, and then look. And then you could display this by months and you have your rent roll on that one unit. I mean, this is all what it's about. Then you would be able to tell if you were collecting pet fees, most things like in an apartments or things, you're not going to have, I don't know. I mean, if you're going to have like a big apartment building, you're probably going to have a super and there's no way you're, you don't try and allocate that. Just put it all to that special one for the whole building. Um, that would just be a waste of time. But if you had certain very, you know, that were still expensive, not um, capital improvements, you could also put that in here. So you could see if you were having, you know, a lot of issues with something. Um, this is a really good way to narrow down and create a rent roll right here. And the only way you can do this is with classes. If you have more than two properties inside of one LLC, I think it's worth every dollar to pay QuickBooks for the class. They made, it used to be in the essentials version and now, okay, so right now, September 25th, 2022, it's going to cost you $85 a month plus tax to get this higher version that allows classes. $85 a month, it's still worth it. The amount of time you're gonna go back searching later or using your spreadsheets when you could have just clicked the button and had the report, it's simple enough. Just get your classes, it'll be worth it. The other thing do not do is try and combine multiple LLCs into one QuickBooks. Just don't do it. Just save yourself the aggravation. Um, and it'll be a huge problem later when you want to sell one of your properties and they want to look at your books and you have all kinds of other stuff inside of one. Okay. I hope this is helpful and uh, please put in any comments, any uh, requests. All right. Have a great day.